Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. Today's problem is storytelling, and this is a big one, which is why I'm using it to open the composition category. Because when you get past all the technical stuff, we're just telling stories. So it's up to you to tell that story clearly. This example here is really powerful. This is fan art from Stranger Things, if you've ever seen that show. And what a frozen moment in time. Here we have this magical protagonist who's sort of wreaking havoc with her mind, but all the details support very specifically the story that's being told. There's no doubt in my mind what is happening and why they painted this image. But you don't have to be an excellent painter in order to tell a story. So let's take a look at some examples from the control paint community. This is not an illustration. It's just some concept art for a cottage. It's literally titled cottage. So you might think, well, hey, there's no story in a piece of concept art, it's just a house. This is where I think story is all the more important. If you're designing something, it lives in some context somewhere. And right now, there's really not a lot of details that tell me anything about this cottage. What I decided to do was to make it a specific cottage. In this case, it's a sheep farm. So here I've added you know, a cute little um, sign over the door, a little bit of pasture area, a coop, a tacked a little barn back here on the back of the house. But all told, you can now look at this and say, ah, this is a sheep farm. And based on all the supporting little details around, I can kind of understand the reason that this exists in the world. Clearly my rendering is not beautiful, but I hope you can get the idea that you can infuse even the most mundane objects with storytelling. Here we have a character design, same idea. In the case of character concept art, it's common to just do, you know, maybe one hero shot and a front view, as you can see. This would give a modeler enough to work from. But remember, a character in a video game is something that moves around and interacts with the player. In this case, it's a blood elemental. And what I imagine it doing is sort of forming itself. So what I decided to add here was just a little step-by-step -step animation diagram. Maybe it starts as this kind of floating skeleton and then the blood like pools up and ends up turning into its musculature and what you're left with is the final pose. But just by adding a few extra diagrams you can really take a static image and tell a story. It's not an illustration, it's just a character design, but this just tells you a little bit more. Here we've got an illustration. So it's not just a design of a Pegasus, this is called Ocean's Road and it depicts a scene. This would be like a shot from a movie. And the more I looked at this, even though I really like a lot of aspects of it, I kept asking myself, what's going on? Why is this Pegasus so close to the water? Why is there no land in sight? And this idea of Ocean's Road wasn't clear to me. So in my paint over, I tried to turn the project's title into something that was a little more visual. What I added here was a glowing, path through the water, like maybe there's bioluminescence or something glowing underneath the water, and I made one pegasus into sort of like a herd of pegasus. In my mind what this is is some group of migrating pegasus over top of this special glowing path in the middle of a storm. Clearly this was not exactly what the artist intended, but when I look at this paint over compared to the original, it just tells me more of something that's going on. Now clearly, I don't really know why a pegasus would migrate or why there would be a glowing road in the ocean, but the combination of these different aspects add together to tell some story. It says why, not just what. And that's a really important question to ask for your own paintings. Here's another character illustration. I really like the costume, and, you know, I think the staging is pretty interesting, but this comes down to that question of what is she doing? Why is she kind of staring at nothing and why is she posed like this? So the way I decided to modify this one was to grab one of these computer screens, I'm assuming that's what these kind of floating panels are, and to just allow her to interact with one. This was my final result. There are fewer floating screens around, or they've been de-emphasized, but then I made a couple very prominent and she's working with them. Another little detail to notice is that beforehand, her hands aren't really doing anything. The hands and the face are the things that we do most of our communicating with. 
And if you have a character, the viewer is going to look to their face and to their hands just to sort of understand what they're trying to tell us. When I did my paint over, I made sure to have one hand actually interacting. She's, you know, tapping and swiping. And the other hand is in a more relaxed pose. So just a thing to remember, if your hands are not occupied, consider the pose they're holding. Before, after. This image was called Desert Bot, and I had to wonder, what is this bot doing in the desert? He doesn't look dirty, he doesn't really look like he was sort of made for the desert. So in my mind, he has recently arrived. And if he's recently arrived, well, he needed to come from somewhere. So what I did was I just added in a crashed escape pod, like the beginning of Star Wars maybe, or you know, some sort of vehicle that he has arrived in, so a vehicle that matches him. Now that gives a little bit of context. And I put a little breadcrumb trail of little pieces leading back to that wreckage. So in my mind, this gives a bit more context to explain why do you have a shiny white robot in the middle of a dusty desert? Before, after. And I like to finish each of these critique sessions off with one of my own paintings. Here is a recent 3D paint over that I did of kind of a narrow hallway. I was envisioning it in the hull of a ship. But I have to ask myself, what is this room for? Maybe it's storage? I don't really know. In truth, this was a technical exercise that I did not ask myself the question, what am I painting? And that's always a dangerous thing. So in my paint over, what I decided to do was to give a name to this room and to support that with details. The name I chose was Jail Cell. I didn't need to change too much. I really just added in a few different props. I, you know, put a little bit of hay on the ground, a few chains hanging, and then added in these jail doors. But it changes everything. Now this is a place. It tells you why we're looking at what we're looking at. Whether it's my artwork or all the beginner work that I look at, this one problem, storytelling, is the big one. If you decided to change one thing about your artwork this year, I would hope that storytelling would be it. Now you have to support that with all sorts of other technical details, and that's what the rest of this series is about. But if you don't know what story you're telling, how are the details going to fix that problem? So get out there and tell a good story. And I want to thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.